After being put on ice by the talent agency, I purchased a male incubus from the black market. With white hair and golden eyes, a heart-shaped spike on the tail swinging slightly in mid-air, and a pink tattoo on his belly, he was quite a sight. I had him call me master, and took pleasure in bullying him ruthlessly. However, during an audition, he cornered me in the makeup room, revealing himself as a renowned Maverick director. His eyes were teasing yet full of an invasive sense of control. I'm sorry, it seems like now you have to call me, master. The black market was teeming with people. An old, rusty cage sat unnoticed in a remote corner. Inside was a male incubus with white hair and gold eyes. His face was covered in grime, rendering his features unclear. But his physique was impressive. I hadn't intended to buy, but as I passed by, his thin, long tail wrapped around my wrist. I looked over to him, finding myself drawn into his pleading eyes. By me. In a moment of folly, I paid. All my savings. Damn, I muttered under my breath, taking the leash from the seller's hand. The other end was connected to a black leather collar around the man's neck. He was tall, yet he obediently bowed his head and stood behind me. I asked the seller for a large black cloak that I draped over him. It concealed his peculiar white hair, golden eyes, and elongated tail. Only then did I dare take him home. After all, transactions on the black market aren't the type of thing you broadcast. Once we got home, I told him to take a shower, cunningly handing him only a short towel. After the sound of falling water ceased, the man came out, his face flushed, with the towel I provided hooked around his waist. His face was clean, and I paused as I saw it. Only one thought crossed my mind, I struck gold. Yes, he was extremely handsome. All right all right, from now on, I declare. Spending money on men leads to a lifetime of adversity, but exceptions can be made for tall, handsome incubi, particularly those with well-toned abs. Also, he seemed, very, strong. I wiped a streak of drool from the corner of my mouth, my gaze landing on the light pink tattoo around his abdomen. According to the seller, the tattoo would darken in response to his lust. Now, it was almost invisible. Feeling my gaze, he sheepishly covered his tattoo, with the heart-shaped tip of his tail wagging nervously in the air. He seemed a bit ill at ease. I beckoned him with a curl of my finger. He obeyed well. What's your name? Aiden. Aiden. I repeated his name and pointed to myself, smilingly asking him, what do I call myself? Aiden looked confused, his beautiful, golden eyes full of uncertainty. So, I reclined leisurely on the couch, smiling, remember, from now on, I'm your master. As I said that, I purposely tossed off my slippers, nudging his leg with my toes. He stiffened at once. Yet I kept my tone firm, kneel and put on my shoe. Aiden hesitated for a second and then complied. His slender fingers held my foot gently as he slipped the shoe onto my foot. After he finished, he tried to get up, but I caught him, putting my foot upon his shoulder. Did I tell you to stand? Aiden frowned, decidedly not pleased. Though the shaking of his tail seemed to suggest otherwise, making him look more like a canine, which was strangely endearing. Feeling quite pleased with how things were going, I reached for a slim, feminine cigarette but did not light it. Surprisingly, Aiden proved to be rather adept as he lit it for me utilizing the lighter on the table. The blazing orange flame illuminated his broad palm. He lit the cigarette for me. I slowly exhaled a cloud of grayish smoke, slightly obscuring his face. I felt a thrill. I was an up-and-coming actress with a prosperous future ahead of me. Yet, since that incident when I unleash my fury on a director who was trying to take advantage of me by shoving his head into a toilet bowl, I've been shut out by my agency. Work has been sparse and reality is harsh. All the resources that I've earned before have been acquired by a new rising star named Whitney. My mentality started getting worse and I have been venting out my frustrations by smashing pots, burning papers, and cooking ramen noodles. Now, anger's focused on this handsome incubus before me. The moment the smoke cleared, I violently threw him to the ground, getting up and sitting on his body, kissing his lips. Maliciously, I handed him the cigarette. Aiden choked subconsciously and pushed me away, coughing with reddened eyes, looking pitiful. Master. He called me. But I laughed very happily. The feeling of bullying him was more pleasant to me than destroying those vases and papers. Can't you smoke? I reached out to hold his chin. He glanced down, a smile I couldn't understand flashing rapidly in his eyes. Before I could react to what that smile meant, 
his words grabbed my attention. I can't, master. Will you teach me? The tone of his answer was clever, but his eyebrows slightly pick up a bit, as if provoking me. Hmph, interesting. I was smiling so much, my eyes creased. I put the cigarette in his mouth, saying, first inhale the smoke into your mouth, then hold it with your tongue against the upper jaw, as if normally breathing, and start exhaling when you feel an unstoppable cough. Aiden acted according to my instructions. His gaze was fixed on me throughout the process. As he was inhaling, his golden eyes squinted slightly, mysteriously with a hint of aggression. I subconsciously avoided his gaze and didn't dare to look him in the eye. But the next moment I reacted, angrily looking back. To see him leaning his head back slightly, revealing his Adam's apple. He exhaled slowly and the white smoke wafted from his mouth dispersing in the air. I couldn't help but skip a beat and then stopped. I watched as Aiden reached over to my fingers holding the cigarette, softly, reverently, kissing my fingertips. Master, have I learned? Swallowing, I ruffled his hair. Yes, very clever. I swiftly extinguished the cigarette, leaning down to kiss his Adam's apple. That's the thing I wanted to do most just now. Aiden didn't struggle. However, he later took the initiative to pull my chin up and kiss me. His thin tail around the ankle of my kneeling leg. Slow down. It hurts. Master. Later. He wore the powdered tattoo all night. Not until the fish belly white appeared on the horizon did the pattern fade away. I lost my voice in the process. From that day on, I started bullying Aiden quite often. Whenever I felt annoyed, I'd bite him. His collarbones and chest were covered in red bite marks. There were times when guilt would hit me, and I'd ask Aiden if he resented me for treating him that way. But he'd just chuckle softly and start comforting himself, no, the master only treats me like this because she likes me, right? He leaned in close to me, his clean golden pupils gazing steadily at me, sparkling with anticipation. Under his intense gaze, I felt a bit shy about saying the words I like you, and just settled for a non-committally mumbling hum. Suddenly, he pulled me into his arms, hugging me tightly. He buried his head in the crook of my neck, and I could feel his hot breath fanning on the back of my ear. I like my master very much, very very much. I couldn't help but chuckle at his words, very much? We've only known each other for two days, and you already very much like me? He hummed dismissively as a response and spoke some words I couldn't really understand, that's not a certainty. What? I didn't quite catch what he said. He didn't answer, instead, he bit my earlobe playfully. I'm ticklish, so I instantly recoiled, taking a bite out of his chest to retaliate. A muffled hum escaped his lips as he looked down at the unmistakable bite mark on his chest, chuckling as he did. He then asked me, are you a puppy? I tugged at the collar around his neck, raising an eyebrow as I said, know your place. Aiden quickly surrendered. Yes, I'm a puppy. A puppy that loves its master very much. After saying that, he leaned down and kissed my cheek. It was a very innocent kiss, quite unlike the ones we've been sharing in bed recently, which made me feel a little shy. I quickly let go of him and ran off to the bathroom, almost as if I was running away. The phone in my hand vibrated at this point. It was a news alert from a browser. The once acclaimed genius mysterious director is back with a new masterpiece. Rave reviews. Almost without opening the link, I knew who the article was about. Blake Vandermeer. A well-known genius director in the industry, the small master of the top-tier wealthy Vandermeer family, who is held in the palm of their hands. At the age of 18, he produced a mind-bending mystery film with minimal resources that swept all major awards. However, no one has ever seen his appearance, as he always wore a hat and mask when filming. His uncle stepped in to receive the awards on his behalf. For the following six years, he didn't produce any more films. As people began to speculate that his initial fame was coincidental, Blake quietly released a futuristic sci-fi film half a month ago. Its special effects and plot are beyond reproach. For a while, the term mysterious genius director firmly held its place on the hot search lists. A group of people dug for clues only to find a blurry silhouette photo. Even the nameplate he held in his hand was unclear. However, it vaguely seemed to be a name starting with W. Everyone was guessing which star could be liked by this mysterious figure. Whitney, the rising star who took my resources in the company, directly hinted in a recent tweet that the name on the lamp card was hers. 
hee hee, there are many names beginning with W, but he only has me in his heart, she tweeted. The tag Whitney backslash Blake exploded instantly, shocking the entire internet. What's going on? Are these two a couple? Quick, post some frontal photos of Blake. I'm really curious. No wonder Whitney has been crazily snatching Willow's resources recently. Turns out it's the Vandermeer family. What do you mean by snatching? Where does that malignant actress Willow's acting skills deserve those good scripts? The topic gradually deviated as I scrolled. A group of people brought me up, a person vilified for always playing wicked supporting characters. Before I got blacklisted by my company, I told them I wanted to transition my roles and personally negotiated some major female lead scripts. However, now, they were all given to Whitney. At first, I protested at the company, but they threatened to charge me a sky-high breach of contract fee to comply. Whitney even unabashedly leaned in close and said smugly, it can't be helped, blame it on you being an orphan, without any backing, and offending the big shots in the company. Thinking about this, I started to feel frustrated again. I wanted to smoke a cigarette. Aiden, I said sternly as I opened the bathroom door, bring me my cigarette. Aiden set aside the messy sheets in his hand, came over, handed me the cigarette and lit it for me. Feeling bad? He suddenly spoke up. His voice, husky and deep from the morning, sounded seductive. Hmph. Receiving my response, he opened his arms. Would you like a hug then? I was taken aback. Looking at his clear golden pupils. Such a clean color. As these thoughts ran through my mind, my body unconsciously fell into his embrace. His hug was warm, just like every night when we would fall into madness together, clutching each other tightly. Just when I was looking at my wallet, which was even cleaner than my face, thinking that I would have to resort to part-time jobs to get by, my agent, Rose, suddenly texted me. She said that there's a lifestyle variety show called Let's Eat Together that was willing to invite me as a frequent guest. The catch was, I had to act the part of a green tea lady, a foil to Whitney's character. I understood instantly. The company wanted to elevate Whitney by stepping on me. If it was before, I definitely would have declined. But now, I have this enchanting demon to maintain. With tears in my eyes, I accepted. Before I left, I gave Aiden a harsh warning. I even threatened to brainwash him. During the time that I'm out working, you must wait for me at home, got it? Do not go out, bad people out there will bully you. Aiden sat cross-legged in front of me, looked up at me obediently, pointed to the bite mark on his neck, like how you bullied me? I coughed embarrassingly, um, even worse than that. Hmm, I'll obediently wait for my master at home then. He smiled, revealing his cute little fangs, and his tail wagged wildly. Just like a puppy. I couldn't resist reaching out and grabbing his tail to tease him. Watching his ears turn red in front of me in an instant while his tattoo becomes strikingly visible too. I blinked innocently, trying to escape. But he caught my ankle. We have a few more hours, why the rush, Hmph. Master? Well, can we do this in front of the mirror? I want to see you. Okay. Later on, when I stood up, I almost lost my balance. 